no fear. Uncle Sam is here. Again, and apparently with billions of bucks to spare. Again, the administration considering, again, a mortgage rework program that would effectively reduce payments for struggling homeowners. Now, this time, not by giving them the money outright. So here's where it gets a little inventive, but by pushing lenders to slash the principal they owe. So let's say you're behind on that $200,000 mortgage. How about we make it $150,000? So we cut your monthly payment by 25%. Would that work? Well, it certainly would for those borrowers, but how about other borrowers? What about the folks who are dutifully or trying to dutifully pay their mortgages and try to do the right thing? What is to stop them from saying, hey, wait a minute, I want in on this thing? The hell with doing the responsible thing. That's sort of like what happened some years back with another very memorable government housing fix, the one that required only those three months or more behind on their mortgage payments could participate. Well, guess what happened? And this I told you about, because it's so obvious. Thousands of homeowners started skipping mortgage payments so they could qualify. Now, you don't have to be a genius or a world-renowned TV financial anchor. <laughs> just did that. To figure this had stupid written over it. Not, not me, just the, the, the federal idea. Anyway, yet another instance of Washington refusing to put the, the spending shovel down and just let market forces work. You would think we'd have learned by now that good intentions don't come cheap. And in the case of housing reworks, invariably need reworks of their own. So instead of helping people out, these Washington fixes just draw the agony out, draw the pain out. Most end up defaulting, sadly, and their neighbors who weren't rescued cursing as their home values continue falling. I'm telling you, it's madness, and it's a surefire case of a cure that ends up being worse than the disease it's supposed to fix. Bad cure. Same fix. Let's get some housing experts, uh, David Lickett and Kendra Todd, who say maybe it's just time to stop. Kendra, I just think it adds insult to injury. What about you? This is crazy talk. I mean, Neil, flashback to your program five years ago. We had this exact same conversation. It was a bad idea then. It's a bad idea now, and it always will be, and for all of the obvious reasons. I mean, let's start with the fact that it promotes the idea that you can borrow money, not take your commitment to repay seriously, not have any personal responsibility or accountability, but then it, it tells, it sends a message to consumers that, hey, if I can't pay, I can just negotiate to get my principal balance reduced. This is the type of thinking that will set us back into sure, another housing Sure, it just sort of keeps decline. it festering. What do you think, Dave? Yes. Well, it's, it's, it's naive beyond belief for what this could do. And then you start thinking, you already brought up the fairness issue. Is it fair to those, your neighbors on your right or your left, when this starts happening? But this is a slippery slope, Neil. And what's next? Student loan debt forgiveness? That's yes, a trillion that's a dollars. Fact, Dave, yes. And I just think everyone's hands are out. Now, I take nothing away from people at pressure. They'll take anything they can get to ease it. But I'm just worried, guys, about what signal it sends to the housing industry, guys like you, who are waiting for that turnaround, hoping to see it, when there's a large chunk of that population that might be waiting for something else. Kendrick? Yeah, Neil, I don't want to discount the fact that there are still 13 million Americans who are significantly underwater on their homes, meaning what they owe on their mortgage is 25% or higher right, right. than what the home is worth. But a better idea would to be to create a program to allow those people to actually refinance those loan balances so that they can lower their payments, but still promote the idea that they have to pay what they owe. Well, see, David, I thought I'd work with your lender. Don't have the government by edict tell your lender you're going to hack a 25% off this, uh, the, this borrower's principal. That, that's a slippery slope. But that let the, it, no lender wants to throw someone out of the house. It ends up being very expensive for them unless it's just beyond the, the cost of repair. Right. So what would you do to help those 13 million I I in arrears? Well, first of all, there are programs out there that are already existing. Why are we needing to come up with yet another program? We have the programs that help people refinance right now. Look at the interest rates deal. Our economy, you talk about the free enterprise system working. Our rates are so low. This is an ideal time for them to get in and start refinancing at this. The biggest and the scariest issue here, though, in this whole topic of re regurgitating this particular ridiculous idea is it has a potential of being a biggest threat and potentially undermining our existing 
housing finance system. And that is the one that worries the most because it's basic economics 101. Property rights are at the beginning, at the foundation of our economic system. And it, it's the bondholders that hold this. They're the ones that aren't being represented in this discussion. They don't and count. The I hate to break it to you guys. They do not count. But I hear what you're saying mm -hmm. and screaming because you guys have been screaming. Kind of you five years ago. Thank you very much, guys. I appreciate it. Good to be with you. All right. In the meantime, all right, honey, I know if you're watching, I've got your list.